Hi there! In previous videos for chapter 2, we discussed the probability distribution of a single random variable. In this video, we will have the joint probability distribution for two random variables, say x and y. Then, we denote the joint probability by the probability that x takes on the value of x and y takes on the value of y. We will be interested in outcomes of pair of x and y. This video will extend the discussion for one random variable to two random variables. For example, one can say that the joint probability distribution represents the frequency that each pair of outcomes x and y is expected to happen over many repeated samples. This video is in the Eco4000 playlist in my YouTube channel and I have a playlist for Finance 3610 as well. So, let's assume my students are taking both Eco4000 and Finance 3610 and we are interested in the chance that a student pass both courses, or fail both, or pass one and fail the other. Yes, I'm talking about having two Bernoulli random variables. You can check out part 3 video for Bernoulli distribution. Let x be equal to 1 if a student passes equal 4000 and 0 if student fails the course. Similarly, use capital Y for finance 3610. Y equals 1 indicates passing finance 3610 and Y equals 0 failing the course. So, we are interested in four mutually exclusive possible outcomes for the pair of x and y. Failing both, failing equal 4000 and passing finance 3610, passing equal 4000 and failing finance 3610, lastly, passing both. For these four outcomes, Assume that we are given the following joint probability distribution. Now, what does this table say? There is a 1% chance that a student fails both courses. The notation is, there is a 3% probability to fail equal 4000 and pass finance 3610. There is a 16% chance that the student passes equal 4000 and fails finance 3610. There is 80% chance that student passes both courses. Some of the probabilities of the four mutually exclusive outcomes in our example is 1. Using this joint probability distribution, say for x, let's compute expectation, conditional expectation, variance, covariance, and correlation. First computation, let's find the expected value of x. In part 2 video, we calculated the expected value of a discrete random variable when the probability distribution of that random variable was given. Here, the random variable is x. If we had the probability distribution of x as in this table, where the outcomes for x are 0 and 1, then the expected value of x is given by the sum of product of outcomes and their probabilities. For the first outcome, 0 times probability that x takes on the value of 0, and the product of outcome 1 and the probability that x takes on the value of 1. To compute the expected value of x, we need these marginal probability distributions of x. We can obtain these marginal distributions of x from the joint probability distribution by adding up the columns. 0.04 is the probability that x takes on value of 0. The sum of 0.16 and 0 0.8, 0.96 is the probability that x takes on value of 1. Therefore, the expected value of x is 0.96. So the expected value is 0 plus 0.96, that is 0 0.96. How about the variance? find the variance of x. Since I did the variance calculation for a binary variable in general in the previous video, please check it out, I feel free to use the result in terms of the probability of success. The result was p times 1 minus p. p is the probability of success and we found this marginal probability as 0.96. Then the variance is 0.038. But if you wish, you can apply the variance formula from the scratch. 
This is the marginal distribution of x. Let's find the marginal distribution of y. The marginal distribution of y can be obtained from the joint probability distribution by adding up the rows. 0.01 plus 0 0.16 is 0.17. Therefore, for the outcome 0, probability that y takes on the value of 0 is 0.17. For the outcome, 1, add up 0 0.03 and 0 0.8. Then we have... In general, the marginal distribution of x is the probability distribution given by the following formula. By the way, can you now tell what is the expected value of y? Yes, it's 0 0.83 and variance is 0.83 times 0.17. Next, we will find the conditional expected value of x given that student fails finance 3610. In other words, y takes on the value of 0. Since we calculate the expected value of x, the outcomes are 0 and 1, but we need conditional probability distribution for each outcome. When x is 0 and when x is 1. To find the conditional expectation, then add these products. Here's the formula for conditional probability. The probability of x equals lowercase x, given that y equals lowercase y, is the ratio of joint probability and marginal probability of the condition. By using the formula, let's find its conditional probability. The joint probability in the numerator is 0.16. The marginal probability of y taking on the value of 0 in the denominator is 0.17, which is 0.94. No need to calculate this conditional probability since it will be multiplied by 0. Then the conditional expectation is 0.94. Although it will not change the answer, just to give another example on conditional probability calculation, let's calculate this. Applying the formula, divide the joint probability by the marginal probability of the condition. The joint probability is 0.01 divided by the probability that y takes on the value of 0. 0.17. If we need to round to two decimal places, the ratio is 0.06. Now we have enough information to answer the next question. Are x and y independently distributed? Or are they independent? We have recently found that the probability of x taking value of 0, knowing the outcome of y is 0, is 0.06. But the probability of x taking the value of 0 without knowing the outcome of y was 0.04. We've observed that the probability of failing equal 4000 has increased from 0.04 to 0.06 when it's conditioned on failing finance 3610. The conditional probability is not equal to the marginal probability. It seems that knowing the outcome of y provide some information about x. It indicates that x and y are not independent. We say two random variables, x and y, are independently distributed or independent for all values of x and y if the conditional distribution of x given y is equal to the marginal distribution of x. As a measure of dependence, it's time to discuss about the covariance of two random variables, say, random variables x and y. Covariance of x and y is denoted with the symbol sigma sub xy and is defined as the expected value of product of outcome deviations from their means. Outcomes to be multiplied by corresponding probabilities in this expected value are the product of deviations from the means. Suppose x can take on k values and y can take on l values. And so, we are talking about a sample space of k times L pairs.
Going back to the covariance formula, first term will have deviation of x1 and y1 from their means. And so the probability is the joint probability. Plus, the covariance formula has this product for each pair with corresponding joint probability. Let me have two more terms, the next pair and then the last. Covariance in the summation notation. How to interpret covariance of two random variables? If x and y tend to move together in the same direction, then the covariance is positive. Suppose we have the scatter plot of xy pairs. And suppose locations of mean x and mean y as follows. By x and y moving in the same direction, we mean that outcomes of x above its mean are more likely to be associated with outcomes of y above mean y or outcomes of x below its mean are more likely to be associated with outcomes of y below its mean. If x and y tend to move in opposite directions, then the covariance is negative. Here is what we mean by moving in opposite directions. Suppose we have the scatter plot of the pairs where the mean of x and mean of y is located. By moving in opposite directions, we mean that outcomes of x above its mean are more likely to be associated with outcomes of y below mean of y, as seen here. Or the outcomes of x below mu x are more likely to be associated with outcomes of y above mean of y. If x and y are independent, then the covariance is zero. And here's how a scatter plot might look like. The covariance measures the dependence between two random variables, but it tells about the direction of the dependence between them. We have already interpreted the sign of covariance being positive, negative, or covariance being zero. The magnitude, however, is difficult to interpret since it's found by multiplying the unit of x by the unit of y. Correlation is another measure for dependence between x and y, which tells about the strength of the dependence in addition to the direction. The correlation is denoted by rho, and it's the standardized covariance with the standard deviations of x and y. In other words, covariance is divided by the product of standard deviations. The correlation coefficient is unit free since the covariance of x and y is divided by the product of standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. And so the units of x and y coming from the covariance in the numerator are cancelled out by ones from the standard deviations in the denominator. Furthermore, the correlation coefficient is a real number between negative 1 and 1. When the correlation is closer to negative 1 or 1, we understand that the dependence is strong or large. When the correlation is closer to 0, the dependence is weak. When the correlation is closer to negative 0.5 or positive 0.5, the dependence is considered moderate. Let's compute the covariance and then the correlation between x and y in our example. I will directly apply the covariance formula we have already discussed. Since x has two outcomes and y has two outcomes, covariance will be sum of four products, one for each xy pair. Let me list all xy pairs to be able to apply the formula easily. For each pair, the covariance formula has a term of product of deviation of outcome 0 from its mean, mean of x was 0.96, and deviation of outcome 0 from mean of y, the mean of y was 0.83 and the joint probability distribution that x takes on value of 0 and y takes on value of 0, which is 0.01, plus 0 minus mu x times 1 minus mu y 
times the joint probability that x takes on value of 0 and y takes on value of 1, 0.03. Plus, Then, we get the covariance as 0 0.0032. Lastly, when we calculate the correlation of x and y, we will divide this covariance by the product of standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. Here's the covariance. For the denominator, let me remind that variance of x was 0 0.038 and variance of y was 0 0.14. Then, standard deviation of x is the square root of variance of x. And the standard deviation of y is the square root of variance of y. The correlation is 0.04, rounding to two decimal places. Earlier, we have found out that x and y are not independent. Now, we can say more. Positive covariance indicates that x and y tend to move together in the same direction, and the close to zero correlation indicates that the dependence is weak. That is all for now. Hope you have enjoyed the video. Take care until next time.